Hi everyone, this is Sean Ismail from the Cloud Ranger. You're viewing the Microsoft Azure training. Today, we're going to talk about the Azure Cloud Services, the basics. This is going to be part one of uh, several series that we are going to, sessions we are going to have on Azure Cloud Services. There's a lot to cover, so let's get started. So we have talked about cloud services in Azure before uh, when we were talking about uh, creating virtual machines, uh, covering the infrastructure as a service part of Azure um, in previous sessions. Um, so let's get into some details of this cloud services and we are going to talk about a lot of things that will tie in. So as an introduction, uh, what you need to know is that Azure Cloud Services is actually a platform as a service execution model. So um, as we described before, that in a platform as a service, most of the things in Azure are managed for you. Okay, um, a little bit of a history. So cloud services happened to be one of the very first services back in uh, 2010 when Microsoft came up with uh, the Azure platform uh, officially. Um, it was one of the first compute model that was, uh, that was first uh, created and released uh, to the public. And a lot of services actually are an offshoot of all the things that actually constitute a cloud service. As we go more in uh, this session and in the uh, next few sessions, you'll understand how a lot of things that just came out of uh, this service and became an own entity of its own um, by itself. So when I was trying to figure out what cloud services were, were uh, and my biggest problem was all the material out there really did not go cover the basics. Um, it felt very confusing, obviously, because um, cloud services actually constitute of many things. There's so many working parts that are in there. So I had a very hard time getting wrapping my head around it and to figure, figure out what it, what is all the stuff in, that goes in there and how, how to differentiate between them and all the things. So I'm going to make this really, really simple and easy for you to understand, at least the way I understand it um, and seems easy for me. And I hope that this works out for you. So whenever in Azure, uh, the phrase cloud services is used, it really could mean one of two things. One of these things we have already covered when we are doing the Azure virtual machines, where we talked about um, uh, cloud service as being a container of virtual machines. So what I had mentioned and you have already gathered was that whenever you are creating a virtual machine, a cloud service was being created. And it is the cloud service in which the virtual machine or machines would reside. And you'd use a virtual IP, a, a, you know, a public address, which would be the VIP uh, or virtual IP address, where a public address would be there and you'd connect to the cloud service to get to the virtual machines. So that's one way of viewing cloud services. And the second one, and this is going to be pretty much the entire uh, next this session and next few sessions, the one we are going to talk about, is actually cloud services we mean in the PaaS execution model. And when we say that, there are still going to be virtual machines involved in there, but that's not going to be something that you are going to manage. It's going to be managed by Azure services, okay? So the container of VMs was the one it was self-managed. You created the virtual machines, you create the cloud service, and, and you know you did whatever you needed to do. In the second one, it's going to be managed by Azure. Uh, there are still going to be virtual machines in there, and the, the underlying infrastructure and all will be taken care of for you. So our session is going to be on the second one where uh, the, it's a PaaS model and everything is taken care of for you. So what does this cloud service really really does for you? Well, in the PaaS environment, basically all we are trying to do is have a web application or web service or like a website that will be created and be hosted. So end of the day, when you think of the cloud service in the Azure managed sense, 
it is just like how we did as your websites in the last few sessions. You're going to basically just host a web application or a website or a web service. That's all you're going to really do there. Okay. There's nothing else you really do there. Well, there's not, I'm not going to completely say there's nothing else you do there because there's a lot you can do in there, but basically all you're trying to do is have a web application up and running. So anytime now somebody comes and says that, Hey, I'm hosting something in a cloud service. Uh, they're just posting a web application. They're just talking about, uh, you know, having a website or a web application or a web service up there and running. Everything else that will follow are basically what it requires to host that web application or web service and scaling them in and out, um, you know, up and down and having more control over it. So some of you might have this question right now, and I'll, I'll touch this uh, in a bit, um, is we already have Azure websites, and I know, Sean, you just went ahead and spent all the last few sessions in Azure websites. Why do we need cloud services for running our web application and web services? Well, you'll see in a bit that, you know, you have just so much more control when it comes to this. And like I said, cloud services were the f one of the first services that came out from Azure. A lot of things came out after. So based on this, maybe Microsoft figured out that, hey, I'm already creating a virtual machine and giving these people this app place to go host uh, their web application. Maybe we need something called as infrastructure as a service where people can make their own virtual machines and do other things. And you know what? You wouldn't be too far off. That's exactly what happened. There was nothing called as IAS, infrastructure as a service, when Microsoft Azure really came out. They were not allowing you to create virtual machines yourself to do a lot of things. That just came long after this uh, cloud services came out. Microsoft thought that we might we, we are doing this, so might as well do that. But uh, given that this is uh, one of the oldest models, it by no means uh, it's not advanced. There's a lot you can do on this, and this is probably uh, very applicable in what you are doing today. In fact, a lot of um, um, you know cloud applications that are writ written online um, are probably written in this cloud services PaaS execution model, where you basically just go and deploy an application, not realizing that a lot of these things are happening in the back end for you. But uh, it's very, very widely used and very successful. Okay, so let's move on. So in the managed sense, cloud service was the one we have talked about. And some of you might look at this uh, and recognize if you, because this is from one of my previous slides, where basically I'm trying to say is that you have a cloud service, which acts as a container for a virtual machine or virtual machines. And you have a user who comes from the internet and gets to the public IP address of the cloud service and gets to these virtual machines. And these virtual machines, I mean, uh, these workloads could be anything. I mean, these virtual machines could be a, a domain controller. It could be, uh, uh, you know, a SharePoint server or anything like that. Uh, whatever you put application wise on this is really pretty much whatever you want. Uh, there's no restriction on this because you have full control over creating these virtual machines as well as putting things on there. So this is more of a infrastructure as a service paradigm. Okay. The one we are obviously talking about for cloud services in this station is not this model, but the one um, we are going to talk about where Azure manages everything for you and you basically host web applications on there. Okay. So let's get to that. So this is the Azure Managed, and uh, this cloud service, when we talk about Azure Managed, means everything is really taken care of for you. So you can concentrate building on your web application or web service and be busy with other things. Um, so what this cloud service will constitute of is roles or virtual machines. And, and you know what, let's, let's rewind a little bit. I was very confused when they told me that cloud services have roles. Okay. I was thinking, what does this roles do? I get too much carried away with that. But when I actually deployed a cloud service and did separate roles in there, what I found out that in cloud services, when they say that deploying a role, it is actually deploying a virtual machine. Okay. But since it's a cloud service term, um, you need to get used to these terminologies and you need to understand what really it means in context. So, Cloud services have basically two roles. One is a web role and one is a work role. 
So you'll have a cloud service with two roles. Having said that, it can have multiple roles of the same type. So you could have multiple web roles here. You could have multiple worker roles here in the cloud service. It all comes down to how much your subscription will allow you to do. And like I mentioned, end of the day, the easiest way to picture this role is that these are all virtual machines. So technically, if you have one web role and one work role, you actually have one virtual machine with the web role on it and one virtual machine, which is the worker role. OK, and if somebody says that, hey, my cloud service has two web roles and one worker role, it means that it has two web role virtual machines and one worker role virtual machine. OK, and you can scale this so you can scale this independently. You could have a cloud service with one web role, no worker role at all. Or you could have one cloud service with two web roles and five worker roles. So there is something you can independently do as far as instances are concerned in cloud services. Okay, but think of this as nothing but special virtual machines. Now let's get to the next point. What do we mean by special virtual machines? Well, web roles are basically virtual machines that runs the Windows Server with IIS. Web role. IIS, that's the easiest way to remember that web role will be the one that will be hosting the web application because IIS is installed. Worker roles on the other end are going to be virtual machines, which are going to be running Windows Server without IIS. So they have nothing to do with hosting your web application. So what does web role and worker role really do when it comes to cloud services? Well, web role will actually host it for you and worker role is something let's put it this way that you want to have some sort of back-end service or back-end processing that you need to do let's give you an example think of one of those web applications or websites where you go and upload an image and you know you just create it an image gallery you have all your images in there um, you know they sort it out this they go and they change the size and do everything for you and provide you those kind of services so in that particular example what would happen is that you'll take your image you'll go to the website which is on the web role and you will upload that image when the image is uploaded in the back end you might have a custom application that's running in the worker role which will take that image and perhaps process it or change size do whatever it needs to be done on the picture and post it back to the web role so when you go to the gallery you see it in a certain way okay so think of worker role as somebody who works in the back end and does a lot of processing for you okay so Microsoft thought that it's better not to do all the processing in a web role environment where, you know, it's hosting your web application, but rather have a separate virtual machine who will do some processing to it for you. OK. In a practical real life on prem situation. Uh, traditionally, anyways, we could have done all that, uh, you know, web role and processing on the same VM. Can you really do that? Yeah, you could do that. But that's not how cloud services is architectured. OK, uh, you know, there's a specific reason these were done in uh, the this kind of uh, rules were separated or, you know, isolated from one another. So, you know, scalability and those other things could be uh, put in picture. So, for example, all of a sudden you found out that, hey, right after Christmas, a lot of people were uploading a lot of picture. There was a lot more processing that needed to be done. Well, you could still have one web role, but you could just go and, you know, add multiple worker roles in the back end because, you know, maybe uploading picture does not keep the VM busy, but the kind of processing it does, it takes, you know, it keeps the CPU or the RAM quite busy and you think that you need more worker roles so the service doesn't slow down. So as you can see that when it when you have to start thinking about how the cloud works and how scaling and everything works, it's not about scaling up and down like I keep saying it's Microsoft is going towards the scaling in and out so you scale out rather than having one big virtual machine which is going to be your website and processing they say you know what maybe you could have another three or four virtual machines with specific size that can do all the processing 
So anyways, I really, really hope that you're getting your head across what cloud services is. End of the day, this whole entire thing here does nothing but host your website and web application. But it's just that it is uh, broken down into small discrete pieces so uh, things can be done more efficiently. Uh, things can be done. Uh, there's redundancy. There is, uh, you know, you have a lot of scalability and all those things in picture. But next time somebody tells you about the cloud service roles, think them as like different kind of virtual machines. Well, in our case, two kind of virtual machines, one that runs IIS and one that doesn't, okay? So I think I have talked enough. Let's actually go jump in and uh, try to demonstrate what can be done. So what I'm going to do is, uh, well, I need to mention something here. It's very easy to get confused with cloud services when it comes to this context about web application is because a lot of resources out there are uh, for developers okay so Microsoft the term DevOps came in there because you know developers and you know ops operations they are kind of uh, kind of mingling them two together so there are there are things you need to think about like in a developer sense or sometimes as you know back-end systems sense to bring them together the reason i say that is because a lot of resources out there um, keep referencing whenever you're talking about uh, cloud services as codes that you write in visual studio uh, packages that you deploy and all that things well, do not be, uh, you know, do not be too concerned about that because for the exam 7533, which is implementing Microsoft as your infrastructure solutions, um, you don't have to be a coder. You don't have to go right now and, you know, take out, you know, Visual Basic or C Sharp language and get started to learn this language. You really don't. As an infrastructure guy, you really need to, uh, you know, you know, be, as an infrastructure person, you really need to just know how to configure this and how these pieces come together. Uh, nobody's expecting you in the exam or in production to go and build a web application yourself. You will have a lot of help from developers to actually do that. And uh, the good part about deploying the cloud service here is because they, since they, the developer will configure it, uh, they will know what kind of resource their application wants, uh, how many web roles will be required, how many worker roles will be required. So they will be able to define that and we will get into details on how to do that in future sessions. But as an infrastructure guy, you will have to know how this all fits in and where do you go and check all that stuff and how you deploy it stuff okay so I'm not going to try to make somebody a developer in this session but uh, we will be doing some stuff in Visual Studio just like we did with Azure websites I mean I I, I, read, I never really did more than writing hello world uh, in a HTML page in my previous sessions and we are not going to really do much more than that in here as well in fact I'm not going to even bring up something like ASP.NET or MVC or frameworks or anything like that. We'll keep it as simple as possible considering the fact that you might be someone who does not have too much experience in development, okay? So do not worry about that. And I know it, it, it is a little intimidating because when I went there, I do come from a development background, so I did not have too much issue um, understanding some of the stuff, but I was looking at this and I was like, you know, some of the infrastructure guys will look at this and be like, what the hell is going on here? I don't understand coding. Uh, why are, you know, why am I making a web app here? Well, don't worry about that. Anyway, so let's go to my client server machine here. And this will obviously be familiar to you. I'm just logged into my account, my subscription here. If you are following along, just go ahead and log in. And we are in our management portal, okay? So a couple of things. Let's go ahead and look at the cloud service here. Obviously, we do not have a cloud service. What, if you recall, we, if we made a virtual machine, it would give us an option to make a cloud service. So if I go over here, um, this is the DNS name. Let's actually go to the from gallery here. I'm not going to create one, but I'm just showing you how it would go and pick up the cloud service. Uh, 2012 R2, uh, virtual machine name. Let's give Ranger VM, I don't know, 001. I don't care about anything here because um, I'm not going to really, oops, I'm not going to really um, deploy this VM. I'm just going to say that at one point, 
it would go and create the cloud service for us. So as you can see over here, we come in here and it says create a new cloud service. So virtual machines need to be in cloud services. So by default, it will give us an option to create one. We could have created one ourselves before if we wanted more control, and we have gone through this many, many times. If you looked here, it would say a cloud service is a container for one or one or more of your virtual machines. Okay, so this was the first sense. Like you remember, I was talking about that there are two ways you can think of cloud service. Well, this was the first way. Anyways, for our purposes, where we are making a cloud service to actually have roles to host web applications, what we'll do is let's come to cloud service here. I'll create a cloud service manually. So let's do a custom create. And actually, let's not do a custom create. Let's keep this easy. Let's go do a quick create. Obviously, like you know, when you create a cloud service, it has to be a unique name because uh, it, has to, it has to identify in a certain way, right? So let's call our cloud service Ranger Web 1. Let's see if it's available. Okay, so our cloud service URL will be rangerweb1.cloudapp.net. This should sound very simple and easy to you by now because we have done things like this before. Let's go East US 2 as our location and click OK. That's really all that is there and you see how fast that was created. Ranger Web 1. So the cloud service has been created. Let's go in there. I want to go to the dashboard. As you can see, there's nothing deployed. Monitoring, there's configuring, scale. There's, there's a bunch of stuff that you can do from this tab. But for right now, all we did was a cloud service and there's nothing in there. We do not have any roles. The way these roles would be created and really deployed is actually from Visual Studio or a package. So um, for our example, we will go to Visual Studio. Uh, we'll create a, a package and we'll deploy that. Um, in real life production environment, chances are the developer will hand you a file or you know a package and say that deploy this package in a cloud service. So we will go into many sessions to in the future to actually find out different ways to deploy that. But let's go ahead and try this from our Visual Studio, okay? So if you do not have Visual Studio downloaded, I'm just using a trial version of the Professional 2013. Go ahead and download one. Um, I actually went and covered that in my previous session when we are doing websites on you know where to go and download it. Uh, just being at Visual Studio Professional 2013, and you should get one for, I think, 90 days total to um, try it out. It should be more than enough. So let's go ahead and create a new project. For the websites, we would go to create a website. I know we are still creating a website or web application, but for cloud services, we are going to create on click on new project. In new project in Visual Studio 2013, I am under a Visual C Sharp here, under cloud, you can actually see as your cloud service. If you just installed Visual Studio 2013 Professional, you might not see cloud service there. I mean, at least not available to be deployed because you need the Azure SDK or Software Development Kit downloaded for this to happen. And in Visual Studio, you will see a link. You can click on that or you can just go Bing something like Azure uh, SDK and download it from the Azure site directly. It's an installer. It installs everything for you. Once everything is done, you restart Visual Studio and you should see Azure Cloud Service here. So anyway, so we are going to work on Azure Cloud Service. So let's go do that. Um, we'll just call our cloud service as your cloud service one. Let it be the default. I do not care about that uh, for now. Click on OK. And it's basically asking that, you know, what roles do you want to put in there? You remember in a cloud service, there are two roles, web role or worker roles. And also you can have a cloud service with web role and worker role or just the web role by itself, okay? So since we did not talk so much about the worker role, I'm not going to, uh, you know, deal so much about it, but um, what we'll do is we'll just go and take the ASP web role and we'll actually have the worker role in there as well. So uh, I like how it says over here, background processing service. So technically we're going to have two types of virtual machines, okay? This is all that it means, web role and the worker role, okay? So my web role is going to be 
uh, called because you can give it a name I'll say uh, Ranger web role one the reason I put Ranger or anything like this over here too is to distinguish stuff that I can actually change my name to and we'll call Ranger worker role one okay so two roles let's go ahead and do that let's click OK so it's creating the project for us right now okay so now it's asking that what kind of template do you want for your web application well you know if you are doing like a proper web application you'll probably do in web forms or something more robust like an MVC framework most likely um, or a page application something like that anyways I'm going to do something really really simple because I said if you may, if you recall that you know I don't want you to now start thinking about complicated development stuff and what these templates do we are going to do something very simple to demonstrate the concepts which is very important for you both for exams as well as an infrastructure person okay so I'm going to just do an empty one empty template here because I'm going to add something of my own let's click OK and it's creating the project for us right now it takes a little bit of time um, but it will spin out one real quick so I'm going to pause all right, that took about like, I don't know, 20 seconds or something. So as soon as uh, that project got created and everything happened, um, you will be presented with a bunch of codes here. These are C sharp codes. Uh, this is worker role.cs. So basically uh, it's, it's saying that, you know, what's going to be the code behind for the worker role. Uh, just ignore all of that for now. Let's, let's cross this out because we don't want to touch anything over there. What I want to talk to you about over here is really this too the Azure cloud service. So your cloud service has roles and the two roles that we have created is the Ranger web role one and the Ranger worker role one. Okay. Let's ignore this for now. These are the two things I want to concentrate on. Um, let's go in there. Uh, there's there's uh, this file over here. Don't worry about that here. So let's go to the web role, right click on that and go to properties. So what this properties is, is it's basically taking a configuration file that's there for the web role and it's telling you how it is configured. So for example, if you recall that end of the day, the web role and the worker role are virtual machines. So since they're virtual machines, they have sizes, right? Like in Azure virtual machine sizes, uh, you know, we talked about A1, A2, A3 in the virtual machine uh, sessions. So you can see that you can actually change those sizes here. This should look very, very familiar to you by now if you followed or if you understand Azure virtual machines. What it basically gives you an opportunity to do is select what kind of size these virtual machines are going to be, the instance of the virtual machines, and things like that. It also has an endpoint, so you, you can find out that how uh, people are going to access the website. Well, port 80, right? For now, we have HTTP, port 80. Uh, there's local storage that we'll talk about in a bit, and there's a bunch of configuration. So what I want you to take from uh, this is that web rules and worker rules have configuration file associated to it, which decides the properties of these roles. You do not have to worry about anything else to create these virtual machines. It's a PaaS, right? It's a platform as a service. So Azure will take care of creating and configuring all this for you. You are not going to create a virtual machine where you go to the, uh, you know, Windows Server roles and, you know, deploy the IIS role, nothing. It will be done for you. I'm just showing over here is that you do have the option to actually select the sizes and the instance counts for your virtual machines. Okay. Now let's close that because I want to keep everything clean. You'd find similarly for uh, worker role that there are same ways to do that. I'm going to keep everything default. I'm not going to touch anything. There are a bunch of configuration files. I do not want to get into details with this right now, uh, but there are configuration files and there is service definitions. These are basically XML files uh, where, uh, you know, XML formatted files anyways, where it tells you the roles that you have, the instances that you have uh, in, in here. So rather than, you know, having uh, to create this um, from the Visual Studio, people who are more familiar and comfortable, they could actually write this themselves and create uh, the services from here. Okay. In our example, we added two roles, Ranger Web Role 1 and Ranger Worker Role 1, and both of them had just one instance over here. That's all that this one is showing.
Next, look at the service definition, this one over here. When you open this one, you'll find out that here it's actually telling you the web role as well as, you know, the virtual machine size and endpoints, bindings, and things like that. We'll get into, into some of these details much later because it will be important for you to understand what this does both from um, an exam as well as, uh, you know, real life production scenario. Okay, so what we are going to do over here is let's look at this. Um, what I'm trying to accomplish is that I will just have a website uh, or a web page where I will say hello world. That's all I'm going to do. Okay, I'm not going to do anything else funky with this here. So basically, I don't need any worker role. I just need the web role where I can do something like that. So the way you do that here is that you can see Ranger Web Role 1 and Ranger Worker Role here. Let's go to the Web Role because it's going to be just a web page. I'm going to right click on that and go to Add. In Add, I will go and add a new item. If you did websites with me or viewed previous sessions, this will look a lot familiar, okay? So all I'm going to do is add an HTML page and I'm going to call this default.htm. So this is the first page I want it to show up. So I'm saying that this web role will just have a web page. So let's go ahead and create, create, click on add. So this is a basic HTML page. I'll just say hello world and I'll just leave it at that. Okay, sounds cool. That's all I'm going to do. So it's going to be a website which just says hello world. So just like Azure websites, your Azure cloud services can be published. And so in the back end, it's creating a package, deploying it and all that. We'll get that to later, but let's get, a, let's get the website up and running. The way we do that is come over here and uh, right click on the Azure cloud service one and we are going to go to publish. All right, when we hit on publish here, let's actually go back. I am already signed in, but if you are not signed in, it will give you an option to actually get into your Azure account and connect to your subscription. Um, I'm connected to the right subscription, Ranger Pay As You Go subscription here. So let's go ahead and click Next. It's asking for a storage account. The reason it's asking for a storage account is because whenever you deploy a Azure service, um, it needs to, you know, store the a bunch of files that like the publishing package as well as uh, if IS has logs. So there are reasons you need to have a storage account uh, to be created when you publish Azure services. So I'm going to just go locally redundant here. I don't want any fancy um, redundancy over here. So let's call it Ranger Storage one. We'll just call it Ranger Storage one. Uh, it will be East US two. This is where I'm located. Let's go here on create. Shouldn't take too long. Okay. So as you can see, when we are publishing this, it's actually asking where do you want to publish this? Well, I want to publish this into the cloud service I have created earlier, Ranger Web 1. If, if you recall, we went in and created Ranger Web 1. So I want to publish it there. But even if you hadn't created a cloud service, this is the time it would have given you the opportunity to create one, okay? So if you wanted to start off right from Visual Studio, that would have not been a problem. But I want to deploy to Ranger Web 1. It's asking for production environment. I want to do it in a production environment. And it is a service configuration, it's a cloud service configuration. So I went and checked this box earlier, um, you know, when I was doing my practice run, but you'll probably have this unchecked. So go ahead and check this over here. What this does is, if you recall, the web roles are nothing but virtual machines. So what, 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 what Azure is asking you is that, hey, I'm going to create the virtual machine for you, install IIS for you and everything. These are also virtual machines that I do want to give you some control over if you want to. So do you want me to enable the remote desktop for you? And if you do, what are the settings going to be? So the settings over here are basically uh, just the username and password. So what I went and did is, actually, let's go ahead and do that. Um, let's delete this. It's basically asking for a username and password for your virtual machine and nothing else. So I'll say that, okay. I want 
a username and password selected for a virtual machine and this credential will be for all the roles okay so if you recall i had a web role and a worker role two virtual machines both the virtual machines will be using the same credentials so enable the remote desktop uh, so you can go in and look at the virtual machine let's click on next everything else over here should look normal let's go ahead and click on publish this publish actually takes about 10 to 15 minutes depending on you know which re which region and whatever the reason behind that is obvious it's it's going and it's creating the virtual machines for you it's uh, doing a lot of things on the virtual machines for you it's creating the virtual machines it's creating the virtual machine um, for uh, you know installing IIS for you and doing all that so yeah it will take a rock solid 15 minutes or something um, looks like this is a previous deployment I probably want to remove that anyways so initially when I started over here I used to think that okay what's going on why is it saying pending well the reason it's saying pending is because it's waiting to get started over here there's a lot of things that are that are happening here it's uploading the package uh, to the storage account it's uh, uh, spinning the virtual machines up applying uh, extensions for virtual machines um, if you have given any special special instructions uh, in your package it's going and taking care of all of that so this takes about good 10 to 15 minutes so you just have to be patient here I'm obviously not going to keep this up and running I will pause and unpause as it uh, updates the stuff okay so let's go ahead and pause as you can see it progressed a little bit it's creating the virtual machines here uh, both the web role one and the worker role one um, it actually has the web app URL ranger web one dot cloud app dot net obviously this is the service name dot cloud app dot net so if you have guessed that already end of the day guys this is just going to create a website that's all I did right I just went and created hello world here it's just a basic web page and this is going to be the link that's what it really is this whole thing is coming up basically with one link that takes you to a web application or web service but it's just that it's spinning up all the virtual machines to give you all the access in the back end. So if you want to do something more complicated, web applications get, get very complicated, right? I mean, you can do tons of things with it. So uh, it's giving you a virtual machine with IS installed and everything deployed for you. So when we will go and remote into Radio Web Role 1 virtual machine, we'll basically see IS with this default.htm page in there. That's all will be there. Uh, in your scenario, a developer might have a lot more going on in there, a lot more resources. Uh, so, you know, it's it's just a package. It's just taking a package and it's deploying it. Awesome. Looks like it's done. Took about 10 to 11 minutes. Anyways, uh, it's completed. Let's go ahead and click the web app URL and actually see if it's up and running. All right. So end of the day, all we did after all this was go to uh, this URL and have this web page, hello world, show up here. If this was your web application, it would have fired up right now and done everything else. Let's go back to our Azure over here management portal. As you can see, this is the cloud service. It created a storage account, Ranger Storage 1. Let's go to the storage account here. I'm not expecting anything to be in here. Go to containers, VS deploy, Shh, don't be anything there. Container has no blobs. If IIS logs happen, it would show up at this location. So um, let's see if we can manage to get, grab that. Anyways, we'll come back later. Um, the interesting thing over here to note is, let's go to the virtual machines. You see, there are no virtual machines created for you in the traditional sense where we would have a virtual machine created here because cloud services is not creating persistent virtual machines for you the way traditional virtual machines are it's creating virtual machines in the back end in the host uh, it's giving you a lot of options to get to the virtual machines but it's not putting it as a virtual machine in the virtual machines container over here okay so obviously you notice that in the storage as well when we went to the storage containers this is where the virtual machines would be but it's not there because azure says that hey i'm going to maintain all of that and take care of that so let's see what we can do anyways so let's go to the ranger web one cloud service here let's go to the dashboard
in the dashboard, obviously this is the site URL. Um, it's showing all the inputs. It actually got a VIP, which is the public virtual IP uh, because it's cloud services have that, as you know, from our previous sessions, it's in East US2 location. Let's go to configure real quick on the tabs here. You can see it has two web roles, Ranger web role one and worker role one. Um, there's a bunch of stuff here we'll go over later. Let's go to instances. In instances, this is interesting. It went and created Ranger Web Role 1 and Ranger Worker Role 1. They both are running. If you recall, they are virtual machines, so they have a standard A1 size. And you can see it went and put in a bunch of instance 0 and instance 0 over here. That's what it really means. Because uh, even if you give the worker Web Role names, you can have multiple instances of this Web Role. So it will probably uh, increase the counters here as you add more. So how do you connect to the, these virtual machines? Well, you come to the instances here and let's do one. Let's go ahead and try to get into our web role one. So let's go and hit on connect. As you can see, just like our virtual machines, it's bringing up that RDP session for us. So we did not go to this from the virtual machines uh, thing over here because it's not a traditional virtual machine. But like I said, Azure still lets you connect to it to do your stuff. So you'd have to come to the cloud services and instances over here to really connect to it. Okay, uh, righty. Let's go ahead and count to that. If you remember, we put in our credentials. So you are going to put in those credentials in here. And let's go log in and see what's up. Alrighty, it's logging in. Okay, the server manager is firing up. I want to show you something here. This is the web role, right? Let's go ahead and uh, let's actually check what's the name of this host. So let's go type host name real quick. Pretty sure I connected to the web role. It gave it a random name. As you can see, the host name, this is picked up by Azure, okay? So these are random instances that Azure is creating for you. So it went and gave a, uh, gave a name, which is a random alphanumeric character here, even though we are referring to it as Ranger web role one. Okay, that's something I wanted to show you here. The other thing I want to show you over here is, let's go to start. I'm expecting IS Information Manager to be there. Because it went and installed the, uh, it went and installed the IS role for you. So if, if we come over here, go to manage, add rules and features. Let's go next, 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 server roles, file storage. As you can see, the web server IIS role was already installed for us. This is not something we had to do. It went and did that for us. Okay, so let's cancel that out of there. Let's get out of here as well. In web as you can see that's the website that actually shows up uh, that actually shows our uh, hello world uh, I'll go to basic settings I'll pick up this and see where exactly it went and what exactly did it store there so apparently in this location root zero this is the HTML page that we had created if you remember. So let's go ahead and open that. And that is the hello world that actually gets displayed when we go to this URL. Okay. So what I'm trying to show is that Azure went and did the whole thing for you in the back end. It brought up the server uh, virtual machines. It went and installed IS for you and it uploaded your HTML file and everything is done for you. Okay. So it's coming halfway uh, from like Azure websites to a virtual machines. And 
that's what PaaS is, right? And what Microsoft is trying to tell you here is that, hey, I'm going to do most of the stuff for you, but I'm going to give you a lot more control than regular websites where you could not go and do anything on the IIS directly yourself. You can do a lot over here. You can put in your files. I mean, this this is basically now a virtual machine with IIS in there for you. But it is streamlining a lot of things and letting Visual Studio do a lot of things. So it, it's easier for developers to develop on a platform like that because they'll be like, I don't care about the system. I don't understand the system. I'm just a developer. I want to run my web application and see if it's running or not. So if I'm not even an infrastructure guy, I should be able to do everything from Visual Studio. Click, I mean, pretty much publish this and Azure will take care of the entire thing for me. So it's pretty unique in how it positions itself. Okay, so this was just the worker. I mean, this is the web role. Obviously, you can go to the worker role, and uh, the the difference between the worker roles VM and the web roles VM is this one will not actually have IS installed, but pretty much everything else is there. Um, you do have some control. You can reboot it. You can image it. Uh, I mean, reimage it, and um, there are things you can actually do on this virtual machine. Not a whole lot that you would be able to do from the traditional virtual machine space over here, but it does give you some options. And uh, there, there, there are a bunch of other web, conf um, web service related uh, configurations here that we can do, but I'm going to save that for a different session. But I hope you got enough picture on what Azure uh, Cloud Services is all about and how it creates web applications, and I hope you can follow through. So let's go back to our slides real quick. Okay, at this point, I want to talk about when to use what. It's important that you understand if you're uh, trying to architect this yourself uh, for a pilot or for um, as a developer or an infrastructure person, that when am I going to use what? I know there are three things really, or three ways to bring my website up in very, very basic ways. One is as your website, which is fully managed, very easy to deploy, uh, but you cannot RDP to the virtual machines where your websites are hosted on, right? So as your websites is one way to have your web page. If you followed my websites uh, tut tutorials or sessions, uh, you'd see that I created this in a much, much uh, simpler or easier way using Azure websites, which basically is like one web page saying hello world. If you're going to do something so simple, maybe you don't need a cloud service. You can just go to Azure websites and let them do everything for you because all you're doing is uploading one page. So this is one way, it's like fully managed, easy to deploy, and you cannot RDP, you don't need to. And then you have the virtual machines. With virtual machines, you create your own virtual machines, install IIS, go and create a web application or whatever, uh, create your HTML page in there, and it will be up and running. You have absolutely full control on what you can do on your virtual machine because that virtual machine is yours. Okay, so besides the underlying host, which kind of uh, hosts the virtual machine, you can do everything yourself. That's another way, if you really want full control, and you can obviously RDP to it. And the last one is the cloud service. It's, it's sort of the hybrid of the above two. I like calling it a little bit of a hybrid approach because it's giving you some uh, control or almost full control with how virtual machines are. And at the same time, it's giving you all those streamlined ways of deploying packages or streamlined ways of hosting your application, just like as your websites does. So it's, uh, it's, you, it gives you more control of the web server environment and you can obviously RDP and do all of that. So it's a hybrid scenario. So based on this three, do not worry about how rich or not rich your web application is going to be. You want to find out the only thing that's important is that how much control you'll need on your web page. I mean, I've seen people use CSS and you know JavaScript and basic HTML pages and create amazing websites. And you can do crazy things in Azure websites uh, with just the little control they give you. But then, are, then there are applications in environments which require a lot of control. I mean, you need to do a lot of things in the back end on how just your web application is set up. And for that, you probably need virtual machines, right? And if you think that, okay, I, I need the streamline effect of deploying, but I need to also have good control because I have a lot of things in the back end. I need a worker role, which will take all this information and process it and probably go and write to a database server, a lot of things. Cloud services might be a good thing for you. So depending on the complexity and amount of control is what determines when to use what. That's what I'm trying to get into. 
All right, I think that brings us to the end of the session. Uh, so we covered how what cloud services are, what are the different or the two ways you can think of cloud services, one as a container and the one for, you know, basically doing your web applications. Um, I tried to explain what uh, Azure services, cloud services roles are and how you can simplify the understanding and just think of these roles as virtual machines with the specific purposes. Um, and we got into a demonstration where I showed you how to basically get a cloud service up and running and deploy something uh, from there. So that covers this session. So at the end, as usual, our training site is at cloudranger.net forward slash Azure training. YouTube is at Cloud Ranger Network and Twitter is at Cloud Ranger blog. And a lot of people requested this. So I went and created my LinkedIn profile. So if you want, you can actually uh, connect with me with my LinkedIn profile there. That's the URL. And of course, if you have any questions, you can ask me on email at sean at cloudranger.net. I'm trying to catch up with all my emails as well as all the YouTube comments. And I promise to get back on those in a day or two. Uh, but as usual, now you can also interact with me with LinkedIn and connect. And we can obviously have great conversations. And I also wanted to put it out there that currently um, I started working for an organization here in Canada called Tutu Lead. Uh, it's a great company. They are into strategic consulting with everything cloud, uh, Office 365. So if you need uh, more help that cannot be uh, given on YouTube comments, or if you have any projects, uh, please contact these guys and they're pretty good and they'll take care of you, okay? So thank you for viewing and uh, I guess I'll be seeing you in the next session.